there is another way to get an angle out of our controller, and part of the tutorial challenge is to move the main in any direction and have a proper animation blend. This method is a bit more complicated, but the payoff is having completely independent movement. In the previous video, we used an angle to convert translation. This is just the opposite. We're going to convert translation into an angle and use that angle to drive blends. You see, we need to know what direction the character is moving so that we can blend the proper animation onto it. Finding the direction is finding an angle, and when we have an angle, we have a blend. One step at a time. First, we need an x and a z direction to get the angle from. So let's make two variables called x and z distance. Go to Command tab, Variable sub tab, create a new variable, x distance, just duplicate that, and z distance. Click on the x distance, and we're going to use the expression diff to give us a small increment of time to measure with. So, pick our main object here, which is going to eventually turn into the main bone of our character. It's going to look at itself, it's going to measure its x position on frame now in capitals and between now and the next frame where it's going to be is going to be a small distance. Now plus one. Right click to add that. Z distance is going to do the same thing, just change the X position to Z position. Right click and add that. Let's move these to the bottom of the list here. X and Z distance. If we turn on debug, you can see that nothing's happening because we haven't really moved this object. But if we decide that we're just going to move this one, oh, let's undo that. Let's go to frame, well, might as well just do frame two. Just any frame where we have a difference between that frame. So frame zero, it's going to look one frame ahead and it's going to move 0.78. So that's our z distance and the x distance is 0.55. So where am I getting with all of this? Well, those distances are two sides of a right triangle. And so we get the angle of the hypotenuse, and uh, let's let Messiah do all that stuff. Let's create a new variable. This third expression for this set is going to be called path orient. Path orient is going to use arctangent. Arctangent is a way to extract an angle from the two short sides of a triangle. Under expression, it's down at the bottom of the list here with all the other functions. It's called ATAN2. ATAN2 means that we have two values that we can load up, and it's going to give us the tangent angle coming out. In which case, angles that we're getting out of here is x distance. It's going to load the x distance variable and the z distance variable. Right click to load that, and what we get in radians is our angle. So as this angle is moving around, we have an angle in the world relative to where we moved. So if we move this some more, you can watch the angle change as it moves around. So now that we have angles being returned in radians, we can do our little trick here that we did before, which is divide by, in parentheses, pi divided by 2, to lock that into our normalized range that we had when we did rotations. So I'm going to turn off the direction variable here, and I'm going to change the program drivers to not look at the direction variable. Instead, I'm going to put it in the path orient variable. So what we get now, as we translate around, is we get a blend between the two, where we have an angle, which is our tangent, getting turned into different blend factors for our quadrants. So as we move, right now at this position, he's moving forward, so he's going to blend forward. As he changes, he's going to move to a sideways blend. And we can go even further than this. Let's just drag that over here. And we will translate it even more. You can see as we move the objects around, we have these objects blending perfectly. So now we can translate an object around and we have the proper animations blending on top of it. So if he's walking forward, now he's going to be walking left and he's going to blend between the walking left and the walking back. And so we're actually moving the character around and it's going to blend our animations as we're moving them around automatically. So we're making it one step closer to our fully automated system. We have it now so that the direction can determine what animation track fades in, and we have an equation that determines what rotation fades the tracks in. We're getting close. Go to File and save the scene.